Getting rid of blemishes on skin and video is kind of a difficult process because you still want to leave some of the texture of the skin tone, but you also don't want to get rid of too much where the skin looks unrealistic. So in this tutorial, I'm going to walk you through how to get rid of blemishes on the skin in After Effects, and this is going to be using a combination of the clone stamp and motion tracker. Let's dive into it. All right, so I have a clip of this young woman here with a portrait shot of her looking right into camera. I wanna kind of focus more on her eye. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to soften her skin. And there's a few ways you could do this. Um, a lot of people, when they think of skin softening, a lot of times um, it just looks unnatural because it's more of just like a blur on the skin. But the skin itself has a lot of texture and detail to it especially with close-up shots. So I'm gonna show you a way to do this where it doesn't compromise the detail of the skin, but it also gets the job done pretty well. All right, so I have my clip in a new composition here. I'm gonna right click it and I'm gonna go down to track and stabilize, track motion. My first track point, I'm gonna grab one of these spots here. So the circle is inside the square. Make sure the playhead's at the beginning of my comp. Okay, now I'm gonna analyze track forward and you see all the track points there. All right, so that's good. So I'm gonna go down to my view mode and I'm gonna change this to none, just to hide that for now. Now I'm gonna go up to my clone stamp tool where you could hit command B. And then if you wanna change the size of your clone stamp brush, all you have to do is hit command and then move your mouse to the left or the right. Once I have the size right, I'm gonna hit the Alt Option key. So that's gonna pick a spot to clone. I'm gonna find a spot on our skin that's similar in tone. Let's say probably right about here. And then I'm gonna move it right about to this spot. That looks pretty good. I could undo it if I want, and I could find a better spot if I need to. There we go, that looks really good. Okay. And obviously if you wanna edit your brush, the size, the hardness, you could do so in the paint panel here. The one thing I do wanna change is I wanna make sure that this setting is set to lock source time. This basically freeze frames the first frame of my clone, so this way the video doesn't actually play, it just, is a still frame. I'm gonna click on lock source time and I'll go back to my composition. And now in my composition panel here, I'll drop down effects and then paint. And then I'm gonna to go to clone one. Then I'm gonna go down to transform. Also gonna drop down my motion tracker. And you're gonna see tracker one. That's the track points I just made. So now I click on that. So if I go down to my paint effect, I'm gonna go to my position. So now I'm gonna press the Alt Option key while I press the position button to make a keyframe. And that will create an expression. You'll know that it's an expression because if you scroll over, you could see the expression scripts and the coordinates will be in red. I'm gonna bring my expression pick whip and I'm gonna drag it to connect with feature center of my motion track. So now if I scrub through my timeline here, you could see that the clone stamp that I created is now matching the motion track that I created. So here's a look at the before and after. So if I wanted to change my clone, all I have to do is double click on the actual clone and then it'll take me to the layer panel where I could just select a different one. And if I select a new spot and go back to my composition, you could see that it maintains the same coordinates. Going back to my layer panel, I'm gonna tackle this spot here. So I'm gonna go to motion track points I'm gonna hit V to get my selection tool. I'll go back to my tracker panel and hit track motion. And this will make another track point. So I'm just doing the same thing that I did before. 
tackling a different spot. When I select my point, I always try to make sure that there's a high contrast pixel somewhere. All right, so now I'm just going to track motion forward. And if I make the mistake like this and I'm in the middle of my composition, I could just go back to the first keyframe and I could track motion backwards. Then I'll go back to where my points end and I'll track motion forward. All right, that looks like a really good track as well. So I'm gonna get rid of my view. I'm gonna go back to my clone stamp. I'm gonna hit Alt Option. I'm gonna copy a spot right below it. Try to only press it once because if you press it more than once, it'll create numerous clones. We just want one spot that we could track. So I'm gonna go back to my composition. I'm gonna close Tracker 1. I'm gonna open up Clone 2 and I'm gonna open up Tracker 2 and track point one. And you could actually rename these if it gets confusing because a lot of times it defaults to track point one, track point two. You know, I can name one mole or blemish one or blemish two, but I'll just leave it like this for demonstration purposes. All right, so now I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go to clone two. I'm gonna go down to transform and position and I'm gonna hit alt option while I press the keyframe. And then I'm gonna use the pick whip to select feature center. And if I play it, you could see that both of those spots are gone. So you see the before and after here, looks really good. And you know, another trick that I like to use sometimes, I'll add an adjustment layer here and I'll go to my effects and presets and I'll type in dust and scratches. And if I go to my effect, and let's say I wanna draw a mask under her eye here. And let's say I wanna just soften this a bit, but still maintain my texture. Basically, if you play around with the threshold and the radius parameters, you could find a great balance where you could still maintain your texture, but you could get rid of the quote unquote dust and scratches. So dust and scratches aren't the only thing this could be used for. You know, you could use this for blemishes or you could actually use it for dust and scratches, you know, on a screen or something. So I think that looks pretty good. I could also color correct this a bit, adding a Lumetri color effect. And if I drop down HSL secondary, and I could grab this reddish pink spot. I would click on show mask, just to make sure I'm correcting the right spot. I could desaturate it. I could change the temperature of it, try to match it up with the rest of the skin, or I can go to my color wheel adjust it so it's a little less pink and a little more towards the skin tone color. And you could use this to, you know, make your skin tones more even. So this will be the before and after. And once you get your color right, and if you go down to your mask path, you could create a keyframe and do track mask and make it move along with the rest of your scene. Look how easy that was. Now you can take your supermodel selfies and you don't have to worry about blemishes and you can make yourself look flawless without looking fake. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, and follow us for more. Thanks.